Hey guys, this is Thomas over here from Nurse Money Talk. Now, in this video, I'm actually going to be interviewing Janine Kalbach from Rider RN Agency. And this is actually a really great video to take a look at if you are a nurse or maybe even a nursing student who has always thought to yourself, well, I think I might just start like a side hustle or you're just trying to figure out a way to make a little bit more money that doesn't necessarily involve working more of your, like your nursing job, picking up more shifts. So this is actually a great opportunity because we're going to be talking about why nurses should really look at getting a side hustle. And then Janine is going to give you some actionable tips you can use to, to get started on your very own side hustle. So definitely check it out. Make sure to stay till the very end because I'm going to come back in and then I'm going to give you some of my top key takeaways. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you again for for joining me uh, you know, on the Nurse Money Talk uh, YouTube channel, podcast and whatnot. Um, you know, kind of like our... Our main topic will be just discussing a little bit about your background and just kind of like how you transitioned over to, you know, from your side hustle, it looked like to now your full hustle, mm -hmm. um, if I'm if I understood that correctly. And just kind of like, and I know that you're essentially helping nurses out there start their own side hustle as well. And just kind of like the, like why you think that is so so important so let's go ahead and start off with who you are and what you do all right so i'm janine Kalbach. i'm from cleveland ohio and i'm obviously a registered nurse but first i'm a mom i have two boys and one is 17 and one is nine and i have a husband named adam and but beyond that, you know, my family always comes first. And then my career, I started as a labor and delivery nurse over 15 years ago. And I started freelance writing. And that was my, is my side gig slash full-time job now. But back then I started because I was just looking for something to do on the side. I think I actually just read a statistic that over 90% of nurses have side something, whether that's a PRN job, whether that's some sort of job like that they're selling something on the side. Some people do, you know, essential oils or candles or whatever that might be, or they're making some, they're doing something on the side of their nursing career. And I don't know why that is. There might be many reasons. It might be because they need income. It might be because they need to use their creative minds. And for me, it was a little bit of both, but it comes down to three things. It was always my family, financial, and freedom and at, and those have changed throughout the years at first it was financial the nursing job just wasn't paying enough and i was starting to get burned out in the sense of not like this covid time it was a different burnout for me i was on night shift had a newborn baby then and work in the 12s and they and i was assistant nurse manager so i had a lot of that responsibility and i was pre selfing doing all the things you know and when it came to paycheck, it was like, okay, this gets us by. This is fine. You know, we aren't, we aren't fancy people. It gets us by. And I think all nurses were like, we don't get paid terrible. Like we, we live a good life. It's a good life. It's not extraordinary. We're never going to be rich off of just a nursing salary. Maybe you go travel, you get all that money. No, just if you're a staff nurse, you're never going to be rich. Let's just be honest. So I was like, okay, it's not just the money that's calling me to do something else. It's, I can't just keep picking up shifts. I'm exhausted. And it was taking me away from my home. I was bringing work home with me. I was constantly on call. And it wasn't until after a side job that I was doing, I actually did home care for the pregnant population. And I loved it. And I didn't realize how much I loved it until I was on my own charting. And I, it like clicked with me one day, like, I love this. Nobody has to tell me what to do because I always know what to do. I, I'm not like, I know what it's expected of me. I never needed that boss to be like, you need to do this. You need to do that. I was always very self-motivated. 
but I also always had more than one job. It wasn't always just nursing. Like even when I was a kid, I worked at Burger King, but I was also babysitting, but I was also the nurse aide. Like I always had more than one thing. So to me, it wasn't even just, okay, let's just do something else. To, it was just like, okay, I'm bored. I'm going to do something else over here. I'm bored. I'm going to take assistant nurse manager. I'm bored. I'm going to do more precepting, more charge, whatever it is. But then it gets to a point where you're so burnt out that you can't even handle it anymore. Um, but so that's kind of how I started was like, it clicked of, wow, I like to work by myself a lot. I love my people. I love my coworkers. I love everybody. But it was more like I can get my work done. And I really just want to be home more. I just want to be home more. So then that family factor comes in. So I was sitting around like a lot of people going, Google, hey, Google, what can nurses do from home? Nurses from home, nurse jobs from home. And then I got away from the nursing and went into nurse jobs I can do as a mom from home. <laughs> and that's where freelance writing actually came up. It wasn't even the nursing side. So I joined this Facebook group at the time of moms that were writing freelance articles from home. And I was like, what the heck is this? Like people really do this for like how much money they really make. Like probably nothing because they're writers. Gosh, it was 2013. I started my business. So that was like me dabbling around. Right. So okay. honestly, I didn't take it seriously though, until about 2019, because I was still, I was very career driven in the sense of my, the hospital job. I loved it. I love, I love, how do you not love delivering babies? It's like the best thing ever, but it also got to a point, a lot of politics at the job, a lot of drama. Like I'm not that kind of person. So it was very hard for me to hear the negativity all the time. Oh my gosh, the negative nurses and negative patients. And a lot of, it was just, it wasn't even just like physically exhausting or it was like emotionally and mentally draining. So, so it, when I figured out, here's what it was. It was when I figured out I could make money doing this is when I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to start doing this more. And I actually, my first client was healthline.com and oh, really? they would have me. Yeah, they would. And this was before healthline was where they are now. Like they're huge. Everybody knows them. But back then they were, they wanted freelancers. They wanted um, subject matter experts. SMEs is what we say in the, the world here. And they wanted someone in the medical field, pregnancy, women's health, to review a lot of their articles. So that's what I actually started doing. And they pay me like 60 bucks an article. And it would take me like 20, 30 minutes. I was like, well, heck, I can do this. This is way easier. I'm, you know, just hanging out at home doing this on the side, whether the kids are in bed watching TV, it didn't matter. It took me 20, 30 minutes. I, I can fit that in. So that's kind of how I started. And from then it's just been blowing up in a sense, because there's always that quote out there. I forget who said it, but it's that where focus goes, energy flows. And that's what I figured out is like, if I really focus in on this, I can make it grow. And, and here we are. <laughs> I mean, that, that's awesome. So like, just taking into like your entire story, um, it seems like when it comes to this need to start a side hustle or, you know, you, you set out the, st the statistics that 90% of all nurses have side hustles and you even felt the need to start it yourself and you boiled it down to, can you just kind of boil it down to kind of bullet points and, you know, that you said is like the important reasons why, um, like starting a side hustle is so important. I think those three like tiers, right? I think all nurses go into it for those three reasons. It's either your family, you want to be there more and side hustles let you do that. Financial, you're looking for extra money because nursing's not giving it to us unless we're picking up extra shifts and we're exhausted. So second reason to start a side hustle and the third, so it's family, financial, and then freedom. Um, I don't have to ask anyone to pick up my shift for me. I can go to someone's wedding and not have to switch a different shift and work an extra weekend and whatever it needs. I get that freedom to work, honestly, in this profession, any day, anywhere I want. We recently just went on a camping trip up in New England area, and I brought my laptop with me the whole time and was able to work on, on our eight-hour drive. So stuff like that, 
never did I ever think that was possible, but it was always something I wanted. So I think a lot of people, especially this day and age after COVID, we've learned that like family is so important. Life is short. And if you can make your work around those three things, whether it's one, two or three or all three of them, it will, it just makes you more of a happier person, fulfilled person. Family finance freedom. Um, and I mean, that's, that's that. I, I know, like when I think about why I kind of started my side hustle, you know, I, I look, think about it and it's just like, um, finances was a big part of it. I know for me, and I guess I've always kind of looked at it as like the finances kind of drives everything else. You know, if you're it does. N- not that, you know, ob- obsessed with, you know, wanting quote unquote money. I'm not sure how many people, like if you really talk to them that they'll say, I just want all this money. I mean, you, you want the thing that money gets you, which is typically more time with your family, you know, more freedom, you know, your ability to go and travel and do whatever that, that you want to do. Um, well, and you can also add to that, like, you, of course, it's about the money in the sense of like, that's why we work, right? We need money to do the things in life. But I think in all of us nurses that want to start side hustles, we're still trying to help people. And that's why a lot of other side hustles that I've tried in the past, I I didn't like them because it wasn't helping the people in my life that I wanted to help. Like I wasn't a salesperson. I wasn't a person that could just, but like, I know my writing helps patients. I know it helps nurses. I know it helps public in general so I think just even you like with your podcast like you're helping people by them listening and you giving information it's not about finance but it is I mean it still is but we I think the maybe we'll add another another f the fulfillment side of it like you want to feel fulfilled and you know whatever side hustle you get into fulfillment's also very important that you still feel like you're making a difference in the world so you you ended up settling on kind of like this freelance writing. Um, so, but it sounds like you tried some some other things as well. So I guess just kind of for those who are listening, who maybe now their interests are a little peaked on, well, maybe I should kind of consider a side hustle. Like what, I guess... What were the side hustles that you tried and what kind of like, what was the path that you took to get from there to ultimately deciding that this was the best one? Oh my gosh, there's like so many. So I was your like local Pampered Chef consultant. I sold Pampered <laughs> Chef. <laughs> I hated that. I, um, I love their products. I just was really bad at it. Um, I also, and, and I say side hustle in the sense of side nursing jobs. I did research job where I would um, actually be part of research studies where I would help patients and, and do the data and all that. I love that. I just didn't like leaving my house and have to go to all the appointments and whatnot. I like being at home. So scratch that. And I also, um, I assisted a newborn photographer. Love that too. That was a lot of fun. Again, slash it. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> So like, I think too, a lot of us nurses, we often say like, oh, I think I just, I just need a new nursing job. And so you get a new nursing job and you're like, no, no, that's not it. Something's still not with, like something's not working still. And, you know, the, the research job and the newborn photography job, those still brought in money, right? They brought in the money. They did bring in flexibility. I mean, I wasn't at the hospital for 12 hours a day behind four walls, couldn't leave that kind of stuff, but it still wasn't giving me the fulfillment to go, I'm here when my kids get home from school. I'm here when they get up in the morning, I'm here to put them to bed. So I think too, it just, sometimes you just have to think, and you have to really reflect on what is it that you are looking for? What is it that you want? Because I would just jump into these things, not even go, and because I didn't know until I did the thing. And then I'm like, nope, that's not it either. And that's why I think any online service-based business too is a business that you can start without a lot of money. So a lot of these places, places, a lot of these side hustles, they want you to invest a lot, a lot of money. And 
you don't know if you're going to get it back. So I feel like, I think I started with 200 bucks. I started $200 little Chromebook laptop and just started from there. And then over time, you know, just upgraded and, and did the things that I needed to do to make the business, you know, a little more seamless, but you know, it wasn't easy. It's never easy at first. Everybody starts in that confusion kind of state going, is this going to work? Is this not? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the the investment, you said a couple of things that, that I know for me that I thought about a whole lot before I even, when I was looking at side hustles, which was the investment part being key, because um, yeah. you look at even the Pampered Chef, because I've <laughs> known several people who have done, which I'm guessing it's very similar to like Mary Kay and some of these other yes, ones where yes. you spend a lot of money buying the whatever product and then you're pretty much sitting, you know, you know, cash strap, you know, tied up on these products until you actually move it. And I mean, if you don't do a good job moving it, then you're out however many hundreds of dollars that you or thousands, I guess, in some instances yeah. that you spent on, on this product. And and I, I do think that that is part of the beauty of, you know, doing something service-based and doing something that's so digital-based mm -hmm. in the sense of like, I mean, you know, if you look at what all you've been able to accomplish, and I'm sure we'll get more into that here a little bit later, like you've been able to accomplish in what seems like on just $200. Yeah, truly. <laughs> And honestly, Thomas, I didn't even tell my husband I was like doing this because I didn't believe that it was possible until I started making like a couple hundred extra a month. I was like, huh, hey, Adam, you know what I'm doing? Because <laughs> he knew I dabble in these things. And he's like, oh, OK. Not that he didn't believe in me. He always believed in me. But then it started getting more and more. And I was like, holy cow, I just and my goal wasn't to be some millionaire or something. It was always at first, like, I just want to replace one 12 hour shift. What would that look like if I replaced one 12 hour shift out of the month? Okay. Well now what would it look like if I did one a week and, and slowly I just started to cut back at work, scared to death, scared to death <laughs> going, a client can drop me tomorrow and whatever. And that's the risk you, you go into being a freelancer, but it also gives you that like push to just keep pitching and keep finding more clients and prospecting so that you're, you know, the tunnel never goes dry. Like you always have a little bit of leads and referrals. And then over time, your referrals are your leads. Like they, they give you more and more work. So it's just, it's so scary. It's so scary. <laughs> I'm not saying it is. <laughs> you mentioned about not, not telling, you said Adam, Adam's your yeah, Adam, husband. My husband. You said, you, you mentioned about not telling, not telling him. Was that because you didn't believe that it was going to work? Was there also a little bit of just kind of like you didn't, you know, you didn't want him to, you, you said you didn't think he was, you, you thought he was probably going to be supportive, but was it a little bit of you just kind of like, oh, he's going to think this is crazy or why are you doing this type deal because I feel like a lot of people go through the struggle especially for something that's not very as common of, as going to a w2 job oh yeah like and it wasn't him it was me it's totally mindset on yourself like I thought I didn't think it was gonna work I thought what the heck am I doing this isn't gonna make us money until it was like validated until I could say, yes, this could work. Then I was like, Hey, Adam, I'm doing now. And he is, he's a bank manager. Like he doesn't, he knows computers in the sense of the financial word of what you need to do on in the banking side, but he had no idea what the heck a freelancer was. I didn't know what a freelancer was until I found it. Like it was, and even, you know, we keep saying like online service-based business and, and like, what does that mean? That can mean a lot of things like digitally, like you said, like graphic designers, web designers, social media managers. And then you couldn't even go off those. Like if you look at social media management, you can look at ads, you can look at um, just the different platforms like Pinterest management or LinkedIn management. Like there's so many different sectors that you can go off. I just specifically go in the freelance writing area, which means that I write for companies that need healthcare content. Like, 
your local hospital or a product-based company that needs to sell their product and they they just want information. So like real information, not just buy my product, but like, what about the product? What's the evidence behind it? How do you, how do you sell it in that type of way? And it could be, you know, a simple vitamin. Like, what does that really do down to the cellular level? But in patient-friendly language, which is easy because we do this all the time. So it's, it's not, it's, that's the other thing too, the mindset thing. Well, I'm not a writer. I'm a nurse. I'm not a writer. I didn't get a degree in this. So that's the other thing for me that was hard to say, like, I want to do something else because we're so school driven as nurses to just get another degree. Us us and teachers got to get another degree. You got to get your master's. You got to move on to this. You got to get your PhD. And I was like, so you mean I don't like, should I go back to school and get like a journalism degree? Like, what should I be doing? Oh, I don't have to. I, I can just do this. And sure enough, here you just do it because it's a skill. It's the skill. It's not something you need. Like nursing school, we had to go to. You have to do nursing school. You can't just go be a nurse. But I, I relate it to like an IV, right? Like when we started as nurses, we sucked at IVs, right? And then over time, you get better and better. And then you learn the techniques and now you can start an IV on anybody. And it's writing is the same way. At first, you're going to suck because you do. And we've all written, we can make sentences. We written in nursing school and whatever. Some of us like it. Some of us hate it. So that's the other thing is it's not for everybody. But if you do enjoy writing and you think you can get better at it over time, that's you know, to me, I was like, that. I think I can be a freelance writer. It, it's something I enjoy. Let's kind of transition to to just talking about what are some tips to building like just a a nursing side hustle from a broad sense. And then, um, if you will, kind of transition specifically into kind of looking at a freelance writing business since that is, you know, like your, your bread and butter. Sure. Sure. So I think to honestly just kind of look at a nursing side hustle in general, like, I think you really need to think about where you can fit time in. I think, cause anything you're going to do is going to require time. I'm not saying you need full time time. I'm saying like two to four hours a week. And if you say you don't have that, you do. You just have to do some little time analysis on yourself. Can you get up an hour earlier? Can you fit, you know, I don't know if you're watching a lot of Netflix at night. Can you do something else instead? And I'm not saying you don't ever watch Netflix ever again. No, you do. You just got to learn how to like time manage. That's it. That's a big thing, I think, for a lot of side hustles. Do you, what do you think, Tavis? Is that like a good one to start with? I, I, I think I would agree. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's just about, yeah, find, finding time cutting things off a little bit. Um, I think the Netflix is a, is a big one. I mean, and, and the I think scrolling, that, the TikTok, <laughs> the social, the, the social media. Oh my goodness. Like to, the amount of hours, like not even minutes, hours people can burn on, um, on something like that. I mean, it, it's just, it's a lot. Like I know for me, I did have to make sacrifices when it came with the time that was, I had to play less video games, you know, it, yes. that's, it, that, that's just the truth. Cause at some point, something's going to have to, have to, have to give. And I think so, that goes into like the second thing I'm thinking of is like your why, like, why do you want to do this? And then that, that like sacrifice in the sense has to be your, why has to be stronger than that sacrifice where you're like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to cut out the video games. I'm going to have to cut out the TikTok, whatever I'm doing. <laughs> it needs to go away. And like I said, if, if it, video games, what you enjoy, schedule it in your day. Like say, okay, I'm not going to play video games until 930 at night. And I will be done by 11 because I need to go to bed. Like I will set an alarm and you just, you have to be strict with yourself because no one, that's the other thing. Like no one's going to hold you accountable for it except yourself. So if you're one of those people that need told what to do, then probably a side hustle isn't for you because you need to be motivated, self-motivated. Um, so yeah, I think those are kind of like the first things. And probably if you have an idea in mind, I think the second thing 
is to, I've mentioned it before, like validate that idea. And what I say, what I like try to tell people by that is make sure somebody would be interested in what you're doing. Because a lot of times we go into it with this idea that everybody's going to want my thing or my product or my service. And really nobody does, or they do. And it's just not the right audience. And I'll give you an example. Um, again, I'm, I love the women's health space. So I thought for a while, like maybe I'll offer like some postpartum services. Like maybe I can be a consultant, nurse consultant for postpartum um, moms or whatever. But here's the thing. Nobody wants you coming in their house a day after they have a baby. They just don't want you there. They want help, mm. but they don't want you there. They they are, you know, people feel like they need to make their house nice. And then the you know, they have a dog and they don't want to deal with the dog because they're breastfeeding or they're in pain or whatever. Like, so that to me, I'm like, I know they need it, but they don't necessarily want it. And they might know they need it, but they can't, they don't want it in a sense. So that's like an example of make sure just because you think people need something that they really want what you what you have. And an easy way to do that would be like to do some sort of like beta offer. And I, I tell this like to people that want to build a course is don't go and build your entire course. Start with like a lesson or two and beta test it with a certain number of people. And you can find those people in Facebook groups and um, social media anywhere and just see if they like it, give the feedback. Don't make them pay for it or make them pay a very small fee. And that can give you the validation you need to go ahead and go forward with whatever idea that might be. Um, That's a good one. Um, oh, especially the, yeah, I mean, especially because I've been in, uh, tell me about, I've been, I've taken a lot of beta courses yeah. where either got in for free or got in at a, a steep discount and, you know, the, the creator, they would just ask, I just need, you know, some detailed, you know, good detailed, like opinion thoughts on it by X day, you know, those are great and, because yeah. one, you get it for free. Right. And then the second is sometimes it's incredible. And you're like, you need to charge a lot for this. Like this is invaluable information that, and, and here's the thing, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, there's nothing that hasn't already been done out there. Some, probably what you're thinking has already been done. Freelance writing, it's already been done. So why do people buy my course? You have to think of what makes you unique in this space. And you don't want to serve everyone. Of course we do, right? We want all the people, but you don't want to serve the people that aren't right for your audience. Like you have to kind of think of like this ideal client of yours. So um, again, obviously the uniqueness with me is I'm, I'm a nurse, right? So I have done this and I teach other nurses to do this. If a teacher joined my course, she would get all the information she needs. It just might not be as relevant to her as it is to all the nurses. Um, and I think the difference, like my audience, again, is I feel like a lot of people are very self-motivated. You have to be very self-motivated and you have to like take the time to really schedule in like to your business growth. Um, that, that also means like there's this like <laughs> fantasy that people think like you could just take your laptop and go to the beach and work all day long. I've tried to go to the beach with my <laughs> laptop. Can't see. Stand everywhere. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Just make sure you take a, a laptop that you don't care much about because that that's sand's true. The sand, up. all of it, the sun. I mean, it's ridiculous. But I, I did mention that we just went camping. Now, what I did for that is I bought or I had from the library. They give you a little hotspot for free. So I went up there because my kids are like, you know, they want to be on their tablets in the car. Fine. So we got a little um, hotspot that we can connect to the Wi-Fi. So I connected, had a little lap desk in the car. We put on music and. I was answering emails. Am I as productive? Absolutely not. Of course not. You're not in your own space. So that leads me to the point of you should have like some small space. That doesn't mean you need an office. That doesn't mean you need anything 
crazy. It could be your dining room table. As long as you have a little thing next to it that has your stuff that you need to do your business, that's your, that's your space. Mine was our bedroom. Is that ideal? Absolutely not. You don't want to have an office in your bedroom. That's supposed to be where you're relaxing and sleeping, but that's the only place we had. And that's where I started. We had a little corner desk and that worked for me. Um, and I like a laptop because I was able to travel around the house, but if I really was needing to do that, like deep work, it had to be at that desk. So I think that's another thing, like you need to have somewhere to work and it has, you have to treat it like work. You can't just treat it like fun all the time because it, it is fun, but you still, you still have to work. <laughs> yeah. A um, couple of things um, going back to what you mentioned about um, kind of like taking your own, having seeking out your own audience like you can't serve everybody i don't know if you've ever heard the phrase the riches are in the niches, niches or yep. <laughs> however however you want to you want to say that i guess if and, you use that one it, it's niches because it right yeah, rhymes I mean, better. that's true that would that would rhyme better and and how like you know once you you seek out whoever your target audience avatar whatever you want to call it and then um you can then better serve them better. And then in all likelihood, you can then probably charge more anyway for the same service because now you can say, I'm not just this person who's gonna teach everybody how to do freelance writing. I am just, I'm a nurse, I am geared specifically towards helping other nurses learn how to, how to write. Um, so I think I, I think that's, that's definitely a, a a good one for sure and then even your last point where you mentioned about having having your own space and you know you you touched on it you know you said like being in the right mindset and i think that is it, it's it's very crucial like if it's a if you want to start up a side hustle aka a side business you need to treated as as such you need to be under the mindset these are the times that i'm that i'm devoting to this um not you know not not an attorney not trying to give any sort of legal or tax advice i mean there's no real tax advantages to an llc anyway but for some people like having that quote unquote business entity can kind of help get them yes. in the and in the in the right mindset of this is for the business, this is what I'm doing. Well, and I always say too, like if you if you are doing this as a hobby, that's fine. If you want a hobby, hobbies don't make money. So if you mm. want a hobby, there's nothing wrong with it. I have a lot of hobbies. I would never make money doing them because I am terrible at them. <laughs> but when it comes to business, I I like that you said like an LLC, like get it official. Because when you have a business name and it's, it's official, one, you do have to put up a little money for it, but that means you're, you're ready. Like you want to do this. So, and it, it doesn't mean it has to happen tomorrow, but it's definitely a step in the right direction for reality. Like this is what I'm going to do now. Um, so looking at so any particular advice you got for people who are now looking at, okay. You, you've sold me. I'm, I'm thinking about a side hustle. You're looking at free. Okay. So what about freelance writing? So what, how do, how do I move in that direction or what should I do? What should I think about? So you should think about the type of writing you want to do. And there's so many out there. I would tell you though, like the easiest one to start with is blog articles. And so start there, but don't call your company Janine's blog article services, because what can happen is you're going to turn into an amazing writer with amazing services. So you don't want to just focus only in on one because content writing, I mean, that's what actually what you could call it. You call it content writing services because there's so many avenues you can go with that. You can be what's called a ghost writer, where if I wanted a blog post written that says Janine Kalbach wrote it, but I didn't really write it. You would be my ghost, my ghost writer, and it would be under my name, but you wrote it. Unfortunately, with those, you don't use them for your portfolio, but you get paid more because you don't get to use it for your portfolio. 
there's other writers called copywriters. And I didn't know what that was for a while because I didn't understand the lingo here in the freelance writing world. And what that is, is it's basically a sales page writer. So any sales page you ever went to, a copywriter writes that copy, writes the words. That's what we say when we mean copy. It doesn't mean like a Xerox copy of something. It's the words on a page. So there's, and there's like techniques to be a good copywriter. There's an email marketing writer. It has a little bit to do with copywriting, but it's a whole different avenue. And those people write email newsletters and every, you know, email you get, you, somebody wrote it. So I think that's the other thing too, is um, nurses going into this writing field, they don't realize how many different, like anything you have in front of you right now has a product or a service and it has content with it. So there's, there's just so many angles you can go with it and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's actually getting more and more popular because even like podcasting, right? There's um, people that write scripts for podcasts. There's people that um, transcribe those into blog posts as well. So there's, again, there's so many different avenues you can go with, but if you are looking to become a freelance writer, definitely start probably as a blogger and definitely our audience. So you're talking about audiences, the audience for a freelance writer is on LinkedIn. And I know like nurses are like, I don't go on LinkedIn. That's because we're nurses. We, we don't hang out on LinkedIn because it's, you think of it more of like a corporate world. Well, guess what? A lot of times we're writing for corporate clients. So that's where you need to think like that. Those are the people I need to connect with. Those are the companies I need to start following. So if you're interested in becoming a freelance writer, start a LinkedIn profile that matches that you are a writer, not just a nurse, but a writer and a nurse. Hmm. What else? I don't know. What else? What else can I give you? <laughs> the um yeah because i because i'm thinking i'm thinking um even myself because i i do hire um writers for for several sites and so i just kind of um uh i just kind of think so what do you what do you want to say about like how much you should be charging yeah so I remember when I first started, I had no idea what to charge. And I was like, well, I'll just charge like 30 some dollars an hour because that's what I make as a nurse. And I just want to make as much as I did as a nurse, as a writer. So then everybody was hiring me because they were like, this girl is cheap because <laughs> I was. So at least 50 bucks an hour. And I honestly don't even do hourly. Um, I change that into like a project rate because just because you work faster than you did before when you were a brand new writer doesn't mean you should be compensated any less because hourly you're going to get compensated less if you're working faster so just because you're a faster worker does not mean you deserve less money um and it, isn't that funny like with nursing that would never fly right just because you have 30 mm. years experience you get paid a lot more money than the brand new grad because they're slow and they don't know what they're doing yet <laughs> like, it, that's why we're hourly but um it's that's kind of how i tell everybody to kind of start off like see how long something would take you and it's okay to charge low when you're starting out heck you might even have to do a couple articles for free to get your portfolio started and that's okay you're learning that's why we did clinicals. None of us got paid for those. <laughs> we made it through. So you sometimes a lot of jobs. I mean, there's internships, all the, you know, all those degrees, they do internships. It's okay to just start off a little bit, just not getting a lot of money or getting, you know, portfolio pieces for free. There's nothing. And, and the way you can approach that is come to Thomas and say, hey, Thomas, I need to write something. <laughs> can I write for you? <laughs> <laughs> for free, for I, free. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm trying to think um if somebody approached me and said that they wanted to write something for free I would probably turn turn it down and interesting you're like enough. what are they gonna write right yeah yeah I mean and if you own if you own any website that gets any amount of decent traffic I mean you probably get pitched a decent amount of times, typically for people who are just wanting like backlink, um, or sometimes it's just yes. not very. Um, I do get those. I know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, you get all those all the time. Absolutely. 
And, and sometimes I think I have gotten pitched a couple of times by um, people who seem like they're genuine nurses. Sometimes you can't really tell 100% for sure. And, you know, it, I'm always worried if somebody actually offered to write something for free because I know what, what goes um, into writing. Um, and so I, I don't know, like, I, I, you know, so I don't know. The free one is, is one where I'm kind of stuck on. So uh, Thomas does charge something. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think because it people put, I, so there is, so I know like even, you know, when I was in business school or whatever, they would say that, you know, finding the right price that you charge is, um, is, is important because depending on what the product is, if you charge too low, then there's a chance that people will, they'll just yep. look at it and they'll devalue it. It's like, why, why is this so low? Like, why, mm -hmm. why is this free? Like, is this like going to be like really poor quality? Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, so, because I've never been on the, I've never been on the side you've been on. So I've always been yeah. on the side where the I'm. Re the receiving well, end of the yeah. email. I know. I know what you're saying, because I get those, like I said, now, now that I have a lot of traffic to the site and whatnot, weekly, I get, I get a lot of those emails of, hey, I'll write for you. Or they'll be like, Janine, I read this article and you didn't mention, and they say like, what their product does and they're like we would love to add to your article that because they want the links right that's yeah. that's it and you don't blame them that's what they're that's what they're trying to do <laughs> but there's also something um called search engine optimization seo that you got to know a little bit of a basic knowledge about especially if you're going to write blog posts um you can you can become an expert at that too you can be an seo writer they get paid a lot of money too so it's um blogging is probably the lowest pain you'll get once you start to specialize just think i always relate everything to nursing when you start out with med surge you're just med surge nurse then you can specialize in other areas but you want to get the basics down because all of those are going to translate into different service areas as as you grow and you don't you won't like them all either like technical writing is totally different than blog writing so it's like mm -hmm. you just have to see kind of where you've feel it out a little bit, see where, what you like to do. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that hire us to, to write courses for them for, you know, CEUs and stuff. So that's another area, like you do educational content too. Would you ever, so many would, you ever areas. would you ever recommend one, um, that one of your, your students, um, take a, a gig that's per word? I'm just kind of curious because you didn't mention the the per word in there. Yeah, so it's funny because it, when clients approach me about rates, they'll just say, what are your rates? Or they'll say, what are your rates per word? And mm -hmm. I, it's just me, but everybody's different. I do not post my rates on my website. And I'll tell you why. It's because I have clients that are Fortune 500 companies and I have the brand new nurse who's starting a podcast, who is just starting her business and she wants a nurse writer too. She's not going to have as much of a budget as these guys. So I, I place it on what is their budget and what could I work around? Because you can always negotiate. So mm -hmm. you can, I wouldn't say start super high where they're like, are you insane? But you can start high enough to give credibility for your work. And I wish I could just throw out a number, but it does range so much from client to client for me. So I always have like systems in place, like uh, to just like, even before I ever jump on a call with someone, because I've, I've learned along the way, like I don't just jump on a call with everybody. I make people fill out a form first. I check out their website. I look at their company. I kind of see the budget I might be working with because everybody's reluctant to give the budget too. So it's always like, okay, well, where could I go with this? And then I present them a number, I present them a proposal. And sometimes it's not even on the call. It's usually afterwards, I'll say, I'll put together a proposal based on, and I, I say exactly what they say. Like they say, I'm looking to drive more traffic to the blog. And so I'm looking for about three blogs a week. And I'll go, 
okay, so based on, you know, driving traffic to your blog and three blogs a week, I'm going to put together a proposal for you. How does that sound? And they're like, absolutely. So that's kind of, and then I send it pretty quickly because top of mind usually gets answers quickly. So mm. that's another way to go around it too, is you don't want to talk to every single person. You don't have the time. We're those are our first things that you got to have time. And if you don't even put time in place, like boundaries, then you, you can get overloaded and burn out pretty quickly. Yeah. What about um, for, for, for your students, if, if they're asking like, how would they, like, how would they find, find clients? So, cause for instance, I know for me, like I've used a lot of your, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it, I mean, people call them content mills or whatever. I mean, you can find like high-end writers there too. You just have to seek them out directly. Um, but like you're probably what text broker on the higher end would be writer access. I mean, I found some expensive writers on there as well. But, um, but you know, those platforms take, I believe they take a 30% yeah. cut or something like that. And so that, that affects you know, how, you know, what I'm charging as well. I mean, I think pro blogger as well also has something. Um, I know several people who have used that and, and whatnot. Are those the typical platforms you would recommend? Or is there some other ones that most people generally don't think about that works pretty well? So you mentioned a lot. The, another one is Upwork. I feel like uh, I've had a lot of success on in the past. Um, but there's a time and place for those. I call those either gig websites or job boards, something like that. And there's a time and place for them. It's, I like those when I think of them as like the PRN job, right? Like I'm looking for work because I just need some extra income. But you have to think that pool is very full. Like there's a lot of writers that are applying for one job, especially if it's a health and wellness, it's going to be a lot of people. So that's the other thing is like the odds might be against you a little bit, unless you're on that platform every day and building it up and building it up, you can have a lot of success on it. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of it, where I love, what I love to do the most, there's two things. I like to connect with people on LinkedIn directly um, and just introduce myself. So that would require that you have a good LinkedIn profile set up. Um, and then the other one is to email company, like go scouting a little bit for websites that have a blog, but doesn't seem like it's updated regularly and approach those websites and say, hey, I noticed your blog isn't publishing weekly and give them some, some t statistics that you can just Google and make sure they're relevant that, you know, the more you, you post, the more traffic you're going to get, blah, blah, blah. And say like, I really love this topic. It's really top of mind for me here's some ideas that I could blog about. If you're interested, um, I'd love to jump on a call with you and start with a call because then you can tell them that you're a real human being and your rates and whatever. And you could even put your rates in there if you're comfortable with it. Yeah. And, and on that note, as somebody who's gotten pitched a, a fair bit, I just want to add um, for anybody listening that personalize it for heaven's sake yes, please God. personalize it <laughs> and at least put in what appears to be more than 30 seconds into looking at the website i mean yes heaven forbid you put the wrong website's name on there i mean <laughs> or the wrong you're like copying and pasting an email i've had this they're like hey buddy i'm like <laughs> betty <laughs> <laughs> like, or it's like you could tell it's not it's someone for the united states they'll call me sir hey sir oh, not a sir not a sir <laughs> because it is very obvious when it is cut copy and paste i mean it is very obvious like even i've been doing this now for i don't even know how many years probably four years five years or something like that and i could probably count I might even be on two hands now how many times I have actually replied back to a pitch. Yep. And I, so it's been less than 10. I've been doing it for that long. And I probably get maybe, maybe 50 or 100 a month or something like that. And it all just yeah. gets spammed because it's just, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's, yes. it's just not relevant. Well, and I think too, 
for the writers, I'd like follow up, like show them you're a human being, show them th that you're interested, um, but don't be like annoying about it. Like wait like three days and then follow up. Don't follow up in 24 hours. Um, and that's why over on LinkedIn, when I connect with people, I always add a little note and just say like who I am and what I do. I'm not forcing anything on them, but just to be like, hey, I'm Janine, I'm a nurse. I write content. If you guys ever need anything, let me know. I love your website. I love your product. Something like that. Because you have to actually know and like their product too. Like, don't just go there just because you want a client. Um, mm -hmm. Know about the company. Know what their mission is. And and agree with it. You know, don't go writing for something you wouldn't agree with either. So I think that's that's kind of the cool side of entrepreneurship. You can like pick and choose what you want to write for too. You don't have to do something because you have to do it it's really just on you yeah i mean definitely good stuff um we've been put on here for ah, it's been a minute Quite a while. um <laughs> the so before i kind of wrap it up i just i know we we kind of talked through a fair bit is there any questions or anything you think that i missed and probably should have asked so i think one of the things a lot of um nurse writers have been struggling with is the writing like they're scared because they don't feel like their writing skills are good enough to start a business so um i i listen to that all the time and i've actually started to work with an editor she, her name's nicole and she and i put together another course that's called the nursing writing skills course that walks it's i mean it's an amazing course like it is like college level course that helps you take out wordiness and cut sentences down and even just simple punctuation grammar without like Grammarly. Grammarly is great, but Grammarly is not going to get you the clients that <laughs> you need as a good writer. So it's it's really good. We, we It's not launched yet. Um, August, we're going to launch it, but a lot of our current members have purchased it on top of the course because it's she's actually going to be doing like critiqued feedback on assignments and such too so that you can take those skills and what's cool is that I made like a workbook to go with it for reference that you can just take like this checklist too at the end of it at the end of the workbook and take every piece of writing you're doing and just make sure that it looks good that doesn't mean you shouldn't have an editor on top of it a lot of um writers get nervous sending in their first piece and you shouldn't be you should send it to an editor first even if the client has an editor on their in-house team still have another set of eyes at it because it's easy everybody needs an editor stephen king needs an editor so so, mm -hmm. so do you <laughs> and it makes you look good it makes you look more yeah more polished a little polished yeah, yeah. Because if that company's editor, if they start complaining about you, you're gonna they're gonna be looking for a new writer. Absolutely, absolutely. And you read yeah. it after an editor has written your stuff. Like first, you feel like crap because you're like, oh god, oh I'm a terrible writer. I got all these edits. But then you start to learn from them and read through like what that editor did, and you're like, oh wow, this made it look a lot better. So, mm. so that's why. Um, so I think definitely have an editor. Um, if you're going to go into the writing space with, um, so my company, Write RN, started as my like freelance writing company. And now it's an agency, meaning I hire writers to write for the clients of the agency. So we have, I don't know, 20 some clients right now. And I look through our nurse writer database and pick out the nurses that have the experience that the client needs. Like if it's, labor and delivery, maybe I'll write for them. If it's cardiology, I'm not going to write for them. But a, cardi a nurse who works in cardiology would love to write for them. So we work out a rate and I, I um, project manage all of it. And it works out great. It's kind of like a job. It is a job board. There's a job board and it's mm -hmm. kind of like those websites. So um, there's that. And then within the agency, so my in-house team has um, an editor like Nicole's one of the editors so she always edits before we send it to the client and there's still sometimes a little bit more editing that the client wants done but it, it's near not nearly what it would be if we didn't have an editor doing our work too so it's definitely something you need whenever the that course launches um you know if you'll, you'll get me the link I'll put it in the in the descriptions and um 
And so depending on when you're listening to this, you can find the, the course in the descriptions. And then also where you, you mentioned writerrn.net, correct? What are some, like if somebody wanted to reach out to you, what are some, some places where, you know, or where, yeah. where are you available that, you know, on the world wide web, where am I available? Yeah. <laughs> where are you available at? If you just go to savvynursewriter.com, you'll find everything there, even the course that's going to be launching. Um, so we have two courses, the writing skills course, and then the business of writing course It's not called that. It's called the plan produce profit course, but that's the business side of it. So mm -hmm. if you're like, I don't need the skills, I think I got it, then you'd want to be part of the plan produce profit. And you could also, just because you might not be ready to buy a course, and I get it, you can just um, come to Facebook. We have a community over there, Savvy Nurse Writer Community, and it has like over 2,000 nurses in there now. So we just bounce ideas off each other. We talk rates. We talk clients. We talk about struggles. So it's it's definitely a safe place to to talk and you know help each other out. That's what it's all about. And I'm on all the social platforms, but those are the places where if you're interested, come on over to those and then you'll get to come on in the group. Well, that's awesome. So I'll definitely put that in the descriptions. So if you just go to the to the pod, podcast or YouTube uh, description, you'll definitely see all of that there. Janine, thank you so much for for joining me.